the anti-hero. You know, as far back as I could think, it's always been a fitting title for me. You see, as a child, I was bullied to the point where I had to learn how to fight. But not fight just physically, fight mentally. It was something that I had to do. And sometimes that fight wasn't just for myself. Perhaps it was an acquaintance or a friend, a subordinate, a troop. I did it because it was right. I did it because of no other reason that than that it had to be done. Because if I wouldn't do it, then who would? But see, the anti-hero becomes the anti-hero because it's unconventional. It doesn't come with smiles. It doesn't come with warmth. And I mean, I, I get it. The whole soul-piercing, melancholic, disinterested in humanity look isn't necessarily inviting, right? I mean, because surely we're up to something bad. We're not transparent enough because Naturally, those who are, are saints, right? Adding to the evils of this world is low-lying fruit. But I get it. I mean, if I could lessen the transmissions, trust me, I would. Which may explain the whole distant, tethered to a different galaxy look that we tend to hold on our faces. Sometimes... The methods, the grand scheme of things, a plan, isn't fully understood. And as I grow up, or I grow older, I should say, as an adult, it's funny that this bullying still occurs. It's just we have, I suppose, nicer ways of stating it or sugarcoating and hiding it, right? The social status games, who looks better than who, who's dating who, who's got the most money in the bank, the best jobs, the biggest house. You see, some of us forget that no matter how high this social status is, it could all just drift away. What really matters is what, what's within. And I don't mean that from some, you should be humble kind of way, because no, I don't believe in humbleness. I believe in living. I believe in life. And that's living life to the fullest. That doesn't have anything to deal with living below your means or just getting by. You see, that kind of fight is something that has to occur by a f small percentage of us. And we're not going to do it by smiles and hugs and it's not going to be a pretty every single step of the way there'll be down moments there'll be up moments but the fight remains that it has to happen because of the wrongs being done to others the injustices the suppression that's being opposed upon us you see there's a issue a deformity of sorts with this INTJ mine of mine, I suppose. And that's, there's no way of disconnecting this source, this connection to source information, this infinite clouds of data that exist, this web of sorts of all these interconnected bits of information. It's even undescribable, at least to myself. <laughs> at times I'm not the best. But I try. I suppose the best thing to do is just actively do something to make it better. Something with this information that others may feel but not understand. Something that others may understand, yet they try to suppress their feelings of. They suppress it by opposing their will upon others making them feel weaker or less because perhaps they don't come from the same families or the 
financial backing that they have. There's also the feeling of lack, that you're less to the world because perhaps you're not the shiniest penny in the lot. You're not the most handsome. You're not the most intelligent or you don't have the most money. You're not the prettiest person in the world, right? But you have a place. And you see, this kind of suppression is something that can't be ignored. It's a understanding of how this concept of life, this ongoing buying our way into happiness, this ongoing beating others down and telling them that they don't deserve these kind of jobs or these positions or this kind of lifestyle because that's what they deserve, them alone, because they're the privileged. Or that you should accept less in life because, well, it's just the way it is. It's just how it is, you know. You just got to work a little harder. You just got to cut back more, live below your means. But is that really living? What kind of message are we sending to ourselves? What kind of message are we sending to our children? The future of the world is affected by these kind of choices. Not everyone understands that fight or even has the understanding to even where to start with some of this information that is collected by some of us who understand these things and is, are connected to this source of sorts. Even in our darkest moments when we feel like just disappearing, just going somewhere other, way, other than here, it always comes back to computing solutions. <laughs> uh, it's like a prompt of sorts. Computing solutions, computing solutions. No matter the depths, no matter the darkness, no matter how we perceive all of this that's going on, and how dark and painful it can be for others, for ourselves. It's computing solutions. Perhaps one day this will all make sense, you know, what I've been fighting towards. And I would have atoned for some of the unintentional harm done while in pursuit. Yet, I suppose that's for you to know and for me to not give a damn. Besides, I mean, after all, some of us are just born the anti-hero.